Hello, hello everyone. My name is Shaw McCall. I'm the program director of Girls and Boys, and we are here for yet another edition of Ask a Black Belt. Uh, couldn't be more excited. If you guys haven't seen what's going on today, we have Hanette Stack is going to be jo joining us here in just a few moments, and it's your opportunity to ask her questions. So feel free to comment, post up your questions, and we will go ahead and have Hanette answer uh, the questions live. And hey, Annette, Hello. How are you? <laughs> how are you? How are you? How have you been? Woof, working like crazy, but good. <laughs> yes, like uh, we were saying, like the last time when we um, we saw each other on uh, Leticia, Leticia, it's like we have been working more now than ever. So that's crazy. Oh, yeah. but that's good. That's good. Good, a good thing. Are you guys back open up? Are you guys uh, uh, teaching classes and start, stuff? Uh, uh, open like uh, this uh, next week. Oh wow! So you're getting ready in anticipation of it. Yeah, but like they are here, they are uh, starting with like a one on one without contact. So for Jiu Jitsu, like it doesn't work very much, right? Because we are like a full contact for it, but we'll see how it goes. So, like, uh, so far, like, uh, that's like I was, uh, had like a class before, right? Before like uh, this, uh, this meeting <laughs> thing, uh, I told like the students, like, we're going to be able to come back one on one first, uh, mm -hmm. without contact. We still have to keep like a distance. Uh, I know it's not ideal and it's not like a, what we want, but it's what we have now. So we have to work with what we have, right? Yeah. And, and like, at least like we can see each other, we can get together, you know, and <laughs> that's, that's it. Have to keep going. Absolutely. Uh, and it's been a challenge. I think the jujitsu community as a whole has just been like, we've been hit hard, you know, I mean, yeah. I don't know, how do you, it's a hard one to work around with the conditions, but how, how have you been, how have you for yourself, I mean, you, you are in incredible shape, uh, how have you been maintaining your own health and your own wellness? So I, I uh, pretty much like, uh, I, I feel like this uh, quarant uh, quarantine just helped me in this, uh, in this way because I feel like a, your getaway is like a to exercise because there's so much stuff, other stuff to take care and the, the way you can take your mind away from like all this stuff around is like just doing some exercise and having like a, at least like a routine of exercise. So pretty much what I have been doing. So like, uh, I'm lucky enough that I have like, I can go to the school and work out there or I have like a space here on my veranda when the days are good here in Chicago to work out outside. But I uh, just have been doing um, some training from my, uh, my personal training in Brazil. He sent me some, some workout and I'm just like uh, doing whatever he says. And we have a meeting uh, twice a week. So he helps me like with the training. So that uh, helps with the, the routine. Absolutely. Have you been teaching, were you teaching Zoom classes before? Uh, no, actually not like, a, you know, like I'm not <laughs> teaching classes at Zoom. And I, like I said, I said it before, but it was like a very, um, like laid back in like, in terms of like doing more uh, videos and stuff. I was like, ah, yeah, I'm not like a very good in front of the camera. So sometimes like, you know, I just postpone. And this was the time like you have to do it. You have no other option, but I actually like enjoyed. Like, I feel like there's a lot of stuff we can explore uh, doing like a, the online classes just because like, for example, you're able to, break down technique and if you have a partner to practice so there's a there's actually a lot of stuff you can do but of course we love the contact so it's not it's one thing it's like a, yeah. another thing that we can use in our favor but it's never going to replace the real thing right but no <laughs> it's something you can add so that's like a that's a good thing yeah it's like another tool it's another tool for us to be able to come together to learn from each other and you can learn from anybody like you know anywhere too it's like a live a like a live youtube training <laughs> in some ways you know I, I know a lot of instructors had a hard time kind of adjusting and, and we here at girls and geese had to kind of adjust to this i mean we're so used to having the hands on being at the events same thing teaching at the classes and then all of a sudden you just kind of have to shift to this interactive here we're having a connection here on the other end of a camera you know and a screen so i think it's been a big adjustment for a lot of people very very true 
And uh, but the good side it's like it makes us appreciate the human interactions, you know, like uh, because we this is like a generation we're a lot on our phones and you know even when we're together in a table in a restaurant people are like still disconnected, you know. Yeah. So this time we actually can connect with each other. Like the people, uh, the people you have been avoiding it in your home, like, oh man, like, you know, <laughs> like, they have like a home, like my home in Brazil, like a, a lot of people, yeah, they're like, sometimes you're like, oh man, I just want, I just want some <laughs> but now is the time you miss, like, you know, this interaction, like, you know, like, uh, of course, like you have to deal with like uh, the, you know, with the person inside like of your home too, which sometimes could be a problem, but every problem comes like a, because you need to learn something from it, you know? So I feel like I, I help people to reconnect because people are disconnected. They, they just like, you know, they see something like they're just like a here all the time on the screen. They are not like, you know, face to face, you know, personal. It's not like I'm personal anymore. So it's a good thing. Yeah, I think, I think we'll appreciate that human interaction even more now, you know, having, having to only rely on the virtual world for a lot of our interaction and then having to be cooped up with people that we maybe don't spend as much time as we would normally with. Is that <laughs> the time we avoid? Yeah, that's true. And it makes you deal with issues maybe you needed to deal with that you were just kind of like, ah, oh, we'll just put it under the carpet. You know, we'll deal with that later. Exactly. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm home in Hawaii. I got a I was set to travel the world and do this remotely, and then the pandemic hit, so I'm staying with family. So I'm having a crash but course. That's <laughs> in the best place for this. Oh, my oh God. yeah, right. Oh, in the I, best no, absolutely. I, I can't complain. I, I feel bad. Like, oh, I didn't get to go travel the world because I'm stuck in Hawaii. Oh. Oh my God. <laughs> stuck in Hawaii. Like, I'd love to be stuck in Hawaii right oh, now. Yeah. The mountain apples. Remember the mountain apples? I think I posted a picture and you commented yes, on it. They're yes. coming in. I thought of you. I said, oh, the flowers. Oh, there's going to be mountain apples soon. I remember climbing oh. that tree in Florida with you. That was like one of my fondest memories. Oh, of that was the best <laughs> I ever had. That was amazing. Yes. No, I, you and I connect. I was like, oh, she's my kind of people. Like, she likes <laughs> to get dirty and, like, get in the ground and climb oh, yeah, trees. Sure. Sure. <laughs> you know, like, born, like, you know, very close to the Amazon, northeast of Brazil, like, in a very remote place. Every time when I go there, I tell, I, I was talking to my dad, it's like, that's, like, a, my connection, you know. I'm very, like, a connected to, you know, to the roots, like, you know, like, a, to my place, like, uh, so... Is it hard being in Chicago? That's like a kind of a big city. Is it? It was that a hard adjustment for you coming from that connection to the earth and to the city? It was not like as a, a big because uh, you know I still could travel. Like in the beginning, maybe, but but I was excited about the moment, so I didn't feel that much because mm -hmm. about like just like a making work right. But uh, right now, I kind of like, you know, this is the time I like I miss just like, a, but of course, no one can enjoy like a uh, fully uh, like a, well, outside yet. But I, I feel like I uh, if I could not travel, maybe I would feel more. But I, I'm able to travel around the, the world, come back to Brazil. So I'm lucky wow. enough to have the best job. <laughs> no, I feel you. <laughs> And hopefully it goes back to that very soon, you know, so we can enjoy uh, yeah. the fruits of our, our, so much of our labor for so long. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Well, if you guys watching at home have any questions, go ahead, chime in. Uh, otherwise, Hanette and I will just keep catching up and you'll just have to listen to yeah. us talking. So what else has been going on with you? So just like pretty much like uh, trying to organize business to come back. Yes. Wow. Meu primeiro mestre. My first master. The guy put here, I love, I stood enough for my first master, Fernando Cruz. Yes. He was like, <laughs> a, the one. actually, that's like a very good story, uh, Shama. Yeah, go for it. Professor gave me the best, uh, the best gift he could ever give me. 
So when I came to his school, uh, you know, like I was at the time, like not working, it was just like a finishing high school and going like a, for college. So, and uh, I didn't want to ask my, my dad for, uh... <laughs> <That's good. laughs> uh, but he gave me like, when I came to train at his school, uh, he, uh, I told him like, um, I, I did one, one training. I was like, man, this is awesome. Like I, I, I want to do this. But I didn't want you to say, like, you know, to take advantage of, like, my professor. I said, like, you know, I'm in a very, uh, like, a tight situation right now. Like, my dad is like, I don't want you to ask my dad because my dad's also, like, you know, struggling financially right now. But um, maybe I could afford something, but I don't want, I know, like, it's your job. So I don't want you to, like, take advantage. It's like, you know, uh, do 50% for you. And at the time, like, you know, Jiu-Jitsu was, like, almost half of the, the, the wage. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, like a minimum salary in Brazil. So I was like, man, I, it's like a, this would be hard to afford. But then I was like, oh, okay. And then like after one month, I was like, a, you know, Fernando, like, uh, I, I think like I cannot afford because I don't have, he's like, just come and train, you know, like I just come train for free. And, you know, he is the first, that was the first person who gave me the opportunity before I was like, you know, known in Jiu-Jitsu and, uh, you know, like a famous, like I'm not, I don't consider myself famous, but I had a Oh, name. you're famous. What are you talking about? <laughs> you're a legend, <laughs> Annette. <laughs> no. It's like a, the word's like a not famous, like a, a, a known person in the community, right? There you that go. <laughs> a mark in the sport. So before I was like a known Jiu-Jitsu, he gave me the opportunity of my life. You know, so I see like, uh, you know, if you think about this, it's like a, a, a big thing, but like the guy put here made him like a, have good memories about this, the beginnings, humble beginnings, but it was awesome. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I got a question. Sorry. Oh, so no, you're fine. No, I appreciate you. Sorry. I mean, coming, I, I think that, I think that's a story a lot of people Big can college. relate to. <laughs> you know, I, I, I definitely remember struggling coming up like, oh, I can't afford, you know, paying tuition and such. And I think that's a tr struggle a lot of people are going to have coming back. Yeah, to, you know, after this, because a lot of people lost their jobs and stuff. So what is, since we're reminiscing, what is one of your favorite, like, what is, I know you probably have like a whole bunch of memories that are just kind of pivotal points in your life. But especially back in Brazil, what, what is one of your favorite memories? Or what is something that comes to mind that you just, uh, you look back on, you go, Oh, yeah, those were the days or, or that was a pivotal point for me or something. I think like um, I will uh, put like the world 2004 because it was like the first year that I fought as a black belt in the black belt division because for women before it was a purple in the beginning it was purple brown and black and then moved to, to uh, brown and black and then eventually moved to like uh, one division to each uh, belt which is awesome uh, but it was my first year competing as a black belt in the black belt division. And for me, it was kind of like a the reaffirm, uh, reaffirmation that was like, you know, uh, was not just luck. You know, I was there, I, uh, I trained for this and I was like really meant to be. So after that point, uh, Jiu Jitsu um, took a big part of my life. It became like a stronger in my life in the terms of like, even though, um, because I, I stopped before I had like, you know, like a little uh, problems before and I, you know, like I broke my, my career a little bit in the beginning as a, let's say blue belt, blue to purple. Um, and then when I came back, I was like, I want you to do this. I want you to be the best as I can on the sports. And in 2004 was like a kind of like a, the reaffirmation of uh, now Jiu Jitsu is like a big part of your life. And I want this to be, you know, to be in my life. So I could not like uh, separate ourselves anymore. So I think 2004 back in Brazil and like uh, the, the biggest like uh, memories like I have like on my, uh, my Instagram photos is like on the picture on the, uh, the, on the bleachers, like uh, people were cheering. It was like, um, you know, all my teammates, a lot, like, a lot of the teammates, they were like, you know, with the hands, like uh, their faces, you know, like it's just like, a, um, and like, you know, my uh, grandmaster, uh, Carson Grace was like uh, watching my match. And after the match, he came to like uh, congratulate me and say like, oh, you casca grossa, like a uh, tough skin. Wow. Like, you know, so I was like, wow, man. that was like, <laughs> awesome. That was like a very good year, so 2004.
Nice, nice. And that was when? When was it in two thousand and seven that the IBJJF moved the world to the states, or two thousand seven? Okay, yeah, because it was still in Brazil. Now oh, that's awesome. Uh, two thousand six was the last year in Brazil. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, what? So coming up during the ranks, I mean, you you came up during a time where there really were very few women, you know, I mean, I think we're so fortunate today to, to have so many women that we do. Give us a picture, like, who were some of the women, I mean, and I know there was a couple women ahead of you, but who are some of the women that you kind of looked up to or that, you know, you set the, set the bar for as far as like, oh, this is something that I can do. Oh, I can achieve this. Uh, and it doesn't have to be any of the leading women, but just somebody, some other women that were out there during that time. Um, at the time, like, at the, I think, like, at the biggest names, like, um, uh, Leka was, like, a pretty much, like, a dominant in the sport because I would say, like, a, maybe she was, like, a, not, like, a winning all the time. But there was, like, a, other women that was, like, a, they were winning, but I, the reason why I mentioned Leka is because she was, like, a, such a rebel in the sport. She was, like, a, her style, her way of, like, a fighting, competing was such, like, an aggressive and she used to like a fight like with words too, like, you know, a little dirty and people used to like, it was like a love and hate, but it was kind of like a way to like her personality. But, you know, like we met each other, we fought each other and like, a, you know, I, I always like a kind of like a, I put her because we we're kind of like in the same division. I, I put her as like a, my, um, it's not like a, I would, I won't say like a goal because I didn't have like, I want to compete with whoever was there. But I would say, like, at the time, like, I remember the guy who introduced me to my professor, Andrea, uh, actually, he was, like, a big part of my life, Master Flavio. He said, Anetje. Uh And at the time, Leka was, like, the big name, the division. He said, Anetje, I think you can, uh, you know, you can do good against Leka. I was, like, a, really, Master? You think so? He's, like, a, I'm sure, you know. And I was, like, a, after the time, I was, like, wow. I, you know, so was someone I, I used to look, look up to um but also like a right after Leticia came like a right after they were kind of like a coming together uh she was I think like a purple and uh Leka was like a brown at the time so Leka was a little bit ahead but it was uh you know uh Leka was like the first one just because she was like a and, and Leticia was like in the division uh the lower division so I know I knew like we won't face each other so kind of like you know I look up to Leka just because we're kind of like you know uh, probably would face some time, and I was like, a man, if I if I win this girl, like then, like I mean, I I'm good, I think. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, in a good way. Like we have like a great relationship. I like I love Leka. She was like a very good person, and a person that I um, you know I admire her story, and I'm able like lucky enough to be able to like I have uh, competed against her, and like I become became like a good friends after. Oh, that's, I think that's a lot of, that's so many times you hear of how those friendships start from those moments, you know, and, um, you know, you're one of the, you're part of that generation of women that really paved the way for, for me to be able to do what I'm doing, you know, for me to be able to sit here and provide a platform for women to speak their mind, to share their stories. Um, and, and in my view, I think of it as each generation changes something so it's easier for the next generation, you know, and then on and on and on and on. What were some of the challenges in being a female back in those, those, that time that maybe aren't so much an issue now or maybe still are? Mm -hmm. I think just like a, the acceptance in the, in the group was like a, the the main thing but uh once you were able to go through like a, the first phase let's say uh then i was i was good uh and i said this before previously as well i think like a, you were responsible for the way you set the bar for everybody else so people will uh respect you based on like a uh how you behave and like what you bring to like a, to the to the school but um I think this is like a, still like an issue uh, nowadays because there is like st there's still places that women are treated different than the guys, and I think um, for me, like uh, the people that think this way, you know, they they think because I know there's still people out there that think that you're not going to learn uh, the same if like they learn from a guy or from like a, a girl, 
And I think for me, jiu-jitsu is jiu-jitsu. It doesn't matter, right? And the people that train with me at the time, like, you know, you see, like, that guy, the guy who was, like, here before talking about, like, my first professor, he said, like, the first, the only woman who was able to push him off this, like, the, the side control. <laughs> but because I, I, you know, I brought the fire to the guys, you know, like, in a respectful way. They were comfortable to train with me, uh, you know, like, I was responsible for my training. Uh, as a good training partner, you know, so people would feel comf comfortable training with me and I, I would bring the fire. So I think like I, I earned my respect because of that. But there's a lot of places, uh, you know, like a, people would feel like I don't have. And uh, as a, my role in the, in the jiu-jitsu community, everywhere I go, if I see something that I don't feel comfortable, someone, uh, I remember a time I was rolling with someone, I had like a seminar in the, at the, one of the schools I did, a, I taught a seminar. And I always like to roll, you know, jiu-jitsu is like um, so much fun. So I, we had like, a, she's like, a, we're having like an open match session. So if you want to join, I was like, a, you know what, I'm going to do some jiu-jitsu. I had like a, some lunch and I was like, a, just like a, doing nothing. I was like, yeah, I'm going to do some rolls. And so the seminar was like a, uh, the next day. But I, I rolled with this guy. He was a purple belt and like doing the role. He was just like, you know, interrupting and like, a, just like a talk all oh, nice and, you know, good job and stuff like this. And instead of like, a, there's two ways I could get mad. You know, like, a, let's say the, maybe the old Hanet, the old school Hanet would be like, a, man, I'm going to kill this guy now, right? Because that's the way uh, a lot of people were raised in Jiu-Jitsu. It's not like, a, you know, like a, their fault because at the time, it's like a, the way they were raised. Uh, but there was also the, the, the other option uh, was, you know, talk to this guy and make him understand that this is not okay. This is not like a behavior, a behavior that he can carry away and he will be, you know, people will look at him and think he's like, you know, so it will always be, maybe not, but if you're going to like, a, the, the, that's like the way I say, if you learn the rules, if you like play by the, the rules, if you're like respectful, like that's why we have our dojo etiquette. If you follow this, you're going to be, uh, Joel, my friend, you're going to be accepted. You're going to be uh, well accepted everywhere you go, right? So if you have like a, if you carry yourself well, you're going to be well accepted everywhere. But if you were like, a, you know, acting weird and you like, I have like a, this kind of, like, so maybe you won't be, you know, as accepted in some places because the way they were raised in Jiu-Jitsu. And I told him like, you know, like, um, uh, let me tell you this, like every time you do this, you're rolling with someone, I'm, you know, I'm a black, but I, I said, I think I have like a little knowledge in Jiu-Jitsu. So I've been doing Jiu-Jitsu for a while. So I know when I'm doing a technique, you know, like, so uh, for me, uh, every time when you, you say something like this, you interrupting me, like when I'm going to a technique and you say like a nice, you like, you underestimate, you're undervaluing like uh, my technique. So you're saying like, oh, good job. Like, you know, yes, maybe people will understand like, in, uh, uh, you know, one way, but the way I was raised, you know, was a little bit disrespectful, but I didn't take this way because people like I have like a different uh, way of learning. Like they, they learn different their journey, but I feel like it's our uh, job also to educate people, you know, in Jiu-Jitsu. So um, if maybe like you go to a club where you don't feel like, of course, if you go like the first time and you don't feel like accepted in that place, you, you will leave. You're not going to stay in that place. But if it's like, a, you know, a place where you feel like, a, you know, uh, you got in, you didn't know in the beginning was like one thing and then it became another thing. I think you always have to give the person a chance to say like, oh, I didn't know I was doing this. You know, because sometimes like when you just like let things go, you're not sol solving anyone's problem. You're just like pushing the, the, the problem the carpet, under the carpet. Yeah. Like, you know, like just having a conversation with the person. Because if, if I want to stay in that place, uh, so like if you're like, a, you're, you, you went that far, you like it took like, all the way from like a white belt to purple belt, like or to the blue belt. Let's like not push too hard, like push too much. All the way to your blue belt, and like now you have like you feeling like you're struggling a little bit. But if you don't tell the other person what's what's happening, the other person won't won't know as well. So that's like um I I feel like my my main uh, challenge in the beginning was just to be accepted. Oh, Jazari, beijo, Jazari, So. Good to see like people here. Yeah. But, right?
Yes, it's awesome. I like it. It's like, yay. It's like yeah. a reunion. <laughs> That's nice. A reunion from good people. That's exactly, awesome. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So my problem was just like a, the you no know, trying to like I think like a lot of people still have this problem today. It's much better because there's like a lot more women training, and we are there because of jujitsu. You know, like we're not there because maybe like in the you know because you're going to maybe meet someone in the places you spend the most time. So it's not wrong, but you we, you're not like your first goal to go to jujitsu school is jujitsu, and that's beautiful, right? So yeah. No, absolutely. I remember, I, I think we've had the discussion on this before and we talked about, um, you know, back, back in your, your time and, and, it, and it sprung over to my time as well, where, you know, you had to kind of be one of the guys you had, to, you couldn't like, it was really hard to be feminine and play that role because you wanted to come across as I'm here to train. I'm not here to look, I'm here to train. Do you, what kind of um, in the current state or just in general how do we maintain femininity and having that earning that kind of respect you know but you know putting across that hey with the intent of we're here to train but we're still girls you know mm -hmm. like we're still women so uh, where, where do you uh, what advice would you have is what i'm trying to say very good like um uh you know point about this because like i said in the beginning to be accepted in the group. I didn't want to be uh, seen as like, you know, like a, the girl in Jiu Jitsu. I want to be seen as, you know, like a, just a Jiu Jitsu pr practitioner. I was there like everybody else. So I would try to blend in, not in the sense of like, you know, I would not like uh, pay attention to my, you know, feminine side or like I just uh, wanted to be beautiful. And like, you know, when I go out and stuff like this, but every time when I will go to the match, you know, and I feel like this is like a just not, not even um, uh, thinking about like a, I will still like I have like a be feminine, but I'm like a respectful to the other person to the other people on the mat. And when you think about this, it's like a, you know, I'm feminine and like a, you know, like a, that's the way I, I uh, you know, I, I, um, I walk. I like to wear a thong for, a thong for, for God's side. But you have to understand in jiu-jitsu, you're not going to put your, your gi pants on top of your, 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 your tongue, right? So you're going to put your gi pants, you put shorts, you know, you're going to put rash guards. You don't want to put like a, just like a bra and have your, like, a, you know, your boobs falling on people's like a face and stuff like this. Yeah. So, and that's like, you know, that's like a being respectful to the other person. You know, there's nothing to do with like, a, because you're still going to be feminine. If I'm going to like a going outside, I, it doesn't like, it doesn't have to be like, a, I'm not going to do my nails, like to go, I can go do my nails and go to jujitsu, but I cannot like a put makeup and go to jujitsu. That's different. You understand? Because when I put makeup, that's like, you know, like I'm not like a only, uh, let's say, uh, being doing something for myself i'm being disrespectful to my partner because you know like i'm going to make he's like a giggle you know get dirty or stuff mm -hmm. like that if i'm rolling with like you know just like a, my bra and like a, my you know like a, so the other person is like a feeling uncomfortable because you know like a, they they cannot focus fully on jujitsu because they have like you know everything going like all over right? okay and it can lead to accidents i have had i have had a pop out at the Pan Ams before because I had to cut weight and wear a sports bra and it didn't keep everything in. <laughs> exactly. It happens, you know, but we have to understand that's not only us. And that doesn't mean I'm not going to, I'm going to be like, you know, just like uh, not taking care of, my, of myself when I'm going, uh, when I'm outside, if I'm going to do like a photo shoot, if I'm going to like a go outside, if I like to wear makeup, I'm not like a big fan of like a all full makeup, but I, I will put some like, you know, uh, mascara, mascara and some put lipstick and I'll do my nails sometimes, like, you know, like a, sometimes like when I have like the time, but uh, just like the first train will come off anyway, but we're still happy that we had our nails done. Oh, you feel girly. You're like, oh, getting my nails done. Good, but, but that's the thing. That's the point. It's the point about about being respectful to your partner, to your teammate, because then you have to think about this. Oh, no one wants to roll with me. Everybody's so rude with me at the gym. I don't understand. But you're like a rolling with, the, you know, 
underwear like under your gi like you just like you know your behavior is like a that's why uh so i think like that's like the most important thing that people have to understand being respectful to others and that means following the like a just like a general rules if you go to jiu jitsu you know just like a put if you like a like in brazil for example i had a problem i my most of my wrestling guys they long sleeve and at this time i had like a short sleeve and i was like a training in rio de janeiro in the, like you know december i was like a, i think it was like a december or january so like a, like it was very hot wow. in rio de janeiro like humid i was like like after training i remember i was like a training with a um a friend of like a friend of ours like a Thiago Leiras. he was like a, he was here too uh but uh it was like a Thiago. i'm so sorry professor i'm so sorry give me a moment i had to go outside took my rescue guard i was like dying <laughs> <laughs> I said, like, I'm sorry, I have to take my rash guard now, but uh, it's like, that's okay, and that's okay, but that's different, you know, like, and I still had, like, a, my, uh, you know, like, a sports bra, like, a, not, like, a, a, you know, regular bra underneath, and I think, like, that's, that's about, like, a, uh, keeping, like, a, the balance, you're still going to be beautiful, like, you know, be feminine, but you're not going to be doing your jiu-jitsu match, thinking about, like, oh, my hair is, like, out of place, like, right, like, I have to keep my hair beautiful for... No, during the match, your hair will be all over, <laughs> yeah, crazy. If you have mascara, it will be like you know, like a sweat. Like you're going to be like looking like a vampire or a zombie for sure. So take that stuff off. Just be like you know, ready for jujitsu, like a you know, and then that's like I think like that's like a pretty much like a keeping the balance and keeping everybody like um, uh, comfortable at the school, right? Mm -hmm. Aww. I, I will have, I'll have, I'll conclude with one last question. Um, when you first started out, I, I mean, did you ever think that jujitsu would become as big as it has? And what do you think the future holds for jujitsu? I know time right now it's uncertain times, but like, like beyond a, COVID. Yeah, in, in general, right? Like the sport in general. Yeah. I feel like the the sport. Uh, I think I feel like there's two uh, variations because the sport is just like a beyond competitions. Uh, so the sport is just like a much much bigger than the. Competition. I feel uh, like now we understand this. Jiu Jitsu is about connection. It's about almost like a spirituality because you you know relying fully to someone else like you know training and engaged and. It, like for me like i'm like a suspicious to say because i think it's like a really spiritual like you know you can feel the other person's energy when you're rolling so i feel like um i i, I know like that jiu-jitsu is going to like a, there's only one way to go like to continue to progress because it brings so much uh good things to people's lives uh i i like the way i see like you can help so many people uh not only physically because I would say physically also because a lot of people sometimes like especially I would put in my way our our world like the women like we sometimes we under underestimate ourselves we think we are not strong enough we are not able to do this so, you, you know like we we put like at this uh stereotypes and we underestimate ourselves but jiu jitsu gives you this power to feel I can do this wow like I, I was able to like train with that guy like a huge guy and i was able to you know do amazing so it really empowers you like in a different way so uh physically right but mentally it takes you it like it connects you to people it like makes you overcome your fears i see like a lot of people come to jiu jitsu they're afraid of like falling they're afraid of like uh, getting people close together or they have like some kind of trauma and Speaking for myself again, jujitsu jiu helped helped me a lot to get back on my feet, and that's why I know there's no way to go. Like there's no way jujitsu could go could go you know bad could go like a uh, uh, wrong like a um, or end. Uh, I think the competitions I think will still go and like uh, we'll go back to the normal thing because I think that's like a, just like I'm sure this is just like a phase. But there's no other way to go for the sport in this matter. Uh, I would say I see jiu-jitsu becoming maybe in the future when things are more organized, like maybe towards like Olympics or something like this. 
uh, that would be something big and uh, you know a dream to come true. Like maybe like in the future generations to be able to have jujitsu as an Olympic sport. That would be like a dream. Uh, but I'm like hopeful, and uh, I'm hope. Um, I have a lot of hope for the future, and I see like a bright future for for the sports for sure. No, oh, you're so positive, <laughs> Annette. <laughs> Anything about bad about jujitsu? <laughs> <laughs> No, that's what I love about you is you are always so positive. You know, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Every time I see you, I'm like, oh, I want, I need a Hanet hug. I love your hugs. <laughs> virtual hugs to all the people here, Fariba, my good friend, Jia, like all of you guys. Thank you so much for, you know, getting in and uh, listening to our talk a little bit. You guys are very special. Mm-hmm. You know, each one of you. Absolutely, absolutely. So I'm excited. We have you, so Sweaty Betties and Girls and Geese have come together to create these awesome experiences. You tuned in for our first one with uh, Leticia. Yes. Yes. And stoked to do it again and have you as our headliner. That's going to be fun. I'm so, this. I'm so excited. I'm going to do like a, some um, jiu-jitsu moves. Some things, some things I have been working here with my students uh, we have been doing a lot of drills. I'm uh, actually getting certified after talking to like uh, my friends. I, I had this like um, I wanted to do this before, but I think it was just the right time. Now with this pandemic, I'm getting certified in gymnastics natural, and it was amazing to do Leticia's class, uh, Leticia's class last time because like she was so fast. I was like, oh man, I have to keep up with this. It's hard. That's hard stuff. But I'm like in love with the gymnastics natural too. Getting certified uh, this weekend actually oh yeah like I mean, like some training like you're getting some um you know some training so that's exciting awesome well june 22nd 28th sorry june 28th you guys can find the information on the girls and geese website sign up it's a donation based opportunity for you guys to learn from hanette legend a lot of you out there don't have her at your available uh, you know, as a resource on a, on a database base, unless you're in Chicago or have joined one of our seminars. So this is an opportunity for you guys to tune in and learn from Hanette at home. Um, and then tomorrow at the Girls and Geese, like I talked about before, we have Gina France, and Gina France is going to be showing us a special move for our technique of nice. the week. And then we'll be announcing all of our stuff for next week. But thank you, Hanette. It was such a pleasure, like, talking My- with you. Thank I you. hope I get to see you in person soon. <laughs> yes, yeah, we will. We will. After all this, uh, you know, this craziness is gone. Uh, it's going to be like a very soon. I'm, I know. I know. Yes. I, you know, I'm positive. You have to come visit me in Hawaii and we'll climb oh, trees absolutely. and we'll pick fruit. I call it harvesting. I've been harvesting my dad's farm. I just walk around and pick all the fruit. My brother says I'm stealing, but hey. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I, I would love, you know I would love that. Oh yeah, no, that's what I'm definitely saying. Coming, definitely coming. No, absolutely. So well, take care. For doing all this for the girls and geese and for the, you know, the community in general, not only for the women community, jiu-jitsu, uh, but for the jiu-jitsu community in general, bringing people together, keep like a business alive and uh, alive and uh, changing people's lives through, you know, jiu-jitsu as well. So I appreciate uh, having this talk with you and, you know, having the opportunity to work with you guys. Oh, thank you. That means a lot. Thank you. But thank you. Yes. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. You take care. Bye-bye. Bye.